Greetings everyone and welcome back to another video in which I'm going to be taking a look at another cheapo item, which is nothing out of the ordinary for me. I was going to call this an I Wish episode since this item that I'm going to be looking at is from AliExpress, but I'll leave it as just a cheap phone review. The phone I'm going to be looking at today, I've come across on my live stream so many times and finally not too long ago, a lot of you folks said to me to purchase this and generously gave me some donations towards this to have a look at on the channel and so I ordered it and I have it here today. And I'm very excited to take a look at it because it reminds me of another device and I'll get into that very soon because today folks we're taking a look at the Sugar A100 affordable low-end budget cheap quad core 3.5 inch lady child children music mini LTE 4G LTE mobile smartphone cell phone bit of a tongue twister there but it's a children's phone and a lady phone so accordingly a man can't use this phone that's okay I'm sure I'll manage Currently, it's selling for $83.50 for the device that's bundled within its retail box. With no packaging, it's about $73, but everyone on stream said, go with the one that's in the box, because there's not really a review without the unboxing, so I have the box. Also, I chose pink, because that's what everyone told me to choose, so that's what I've done. $83.50 Australian. I'll display a currency conversion chart on screen for you all, so you get a rough idea of how much this thing will cost around majority of the world. Give or take, these may be a bit incorrect here and there, but it's just a bit of a small reference. The phone does look pretty pretty cool and as I said it does resemble another mobile phone that came out many many years ago you may already be able to tell what it is taking a look at the AliExpress listing there is not a lot to look at here we do have the spec sheet here that says the brand name is AGM which I have looked at AGM phones on the channel before but I don't think this is an AGM device it doesn't have a headphone jack it's got a 13 megapixel rear camera but the front camera is 25 megapixels then it says 5 megapixels so take that how you will type C charging dual sim cards quad core supports L LTE. I don't know what the bands are though. There's no band list on AliExpress. I have no idea what bands these support. If I do end up finding a band list, I'll display them on screen for you all. Display resolution says 480 by 320 and the display size is 3.5 inches and the battery capacity is less than 3000 milliamp hours. And then pretty much the advertising is just here's the phone with Lily, do you often go to the cinema on the weekend? No, I don't. I often visit my grandparents. Okay, well, that's what they do on the weekend. And yeah, there's the two colorways there, one with unicorns and castles and all that sort of thing and the other one was rocket ships and sugar and all that sort of stuff and we chose pink. Next up we've got the phone with Wi-Fi, WhatsApp, WeChat, a clock icon and a camera icon and it's playing Radiohead. But I've got to say I really like the design of this thing and that's what really stuck out to me. It looks like it's built out of aluminium and that big area just below the buttons there is the speaker. This is going to be fun. The mobile phone size is 61mm by 11mm by 141mm. So yeah, it's not that big at all. That's what she said. Uh, you can write, read, listen and speak with your Sugar A100. So that's pretty cool. That's absolutely everything that's in the listing. There's literally nothing else to take a look at. So I guess what we're going to do is just unbox it and see what this $83 sugar device has to offer. Sugar. There you go. A brand name called Sugar. I mean, I guess it's not as bad as Peacock or PP or whatever. Here it is here. I don't know if there's actually one phone in here or two. I got notified by Australia Post today to say that there's two parcels being delivered, but I have just one here. So we're just going to open it up and see. That was oddly satisfying. Okay. And it appears there's only just the one in here. And it is the sugar. Well, here is the box here. It says something there with some stars and a crown. We A100 something or other AI something or other. It's a Red Dot Award winner for 2019. I should Google that and see if that exists. But around the box though, there's not a lot going on. Just more of whatever that says. And then on the back, it says sugar. And then we have both IMEIs there. Feel free to look them up. They may actually correspond to this device and may not be pinched from anything. So you never know. Sugar A100, TDLTE, pink, which is what I chose. There's a website for it. Hold up. There's a website. Okay. Okay, I've just went onto the website and they actually do have a bunch of phones with inlaid 82 Swarovski zirconias. That's interesting, but unfortunately no A100 on here. Supposedly it's from France and is iconic a phone with fusion design, aims to create trendsetting stylish communication devices, cooperates with Swarovski, or Swarovski, the world leading gem brand, choicest original zirconia stones from Austria. You learn something new every day, but I'll definitely have to do more research on this to see what's going on. But otherwise, it's all in Chinese, so I don't know what that says. So let's crack this open and take a look. Honestly, it looks like a book. It's like you're gonna open it up and there'll be a children's bedtime story within here and then a foreign and just laid in the middle of it saying, here you go. Does that make sense? Yeah, it should make sense. Oh, it is. 
Just opens up like a book. Oh, yeah, see? Okay, kids, today we're going to be learning about Hello, Astronaut Often Sugar. Re is ad well no for what R E K. All right, cool. I'm happy with that. That's all good there. We get the cable and it's a USB-C cable. Not too bad. We also get a branded SIM eject tool as well. Then we have the phone itself, which should just pop out. Out you come, buddy. It's stuck. Got it. Just had to punch that out of the packaging. So we've got an IMEI sticker there, which is exactly the same. We do have a quick start guide or no, that's a warranty guide with another sticker there. That's the quick start guide, which is what? It's stuck in there. No worries. All right. That's stuck in there then. Pretty cool unboxing experience. I've got to say, but is it in English or anything? No, it's all in Chinese. All right. Was it worth the extra 10 bucks for the unboxing? Absolutely. And there's nothing there as well. The phone itself though, looks a little something like this. So we've got the unicorn and a burb and an umbrella and star and everything going on there. Can I take this all off or no, I've got to just take this off. Oh, so while taking the sticker off, the back just casually almost comes off with it. Obviously, the whole idea of this device is that it's specifically designed for kids in mind. With the price range of only being 86 bucks Australian, with a cute little design, it's just great for a young kid to just use as one of their first phones. So I will keep that in mind during this review, but I will still just look at this as a normal everyday device. We've got our 13 megapixel camera, LED flash, and yeah, that design on the back there. It actually is a pretty good print as well, I've got to say. Now in the listing, it did look like this is made out of aluminium, but it's just unfortunately plastic. The buttons, however, are aluminium. And then flipping it over, so we've got a screen protector, we've got the three buttons there and the speaker. That's looking pretty interesting. I'll just take this off. Plastic back, glass on the camera, plastic there, plastic all around there, glass display, and then some mesh over the speaker grill. The mesh over the speaker grill seems to be a little bit iffy just going along here. So I'm not too sure of the durability of this. I don't think this would last too long. If it's going in and out of a pocket all the time, this may wear away very quickly. And at the top there, we see some light sensors, the earpiece, and the, let's just say it's a five megapixel camera at this point in time. If you haven't already picked out already what this is looking like, this to me is exactly what I would think if today's Nokia was on the ball a little bit and they went, hey, let's re-release all our phones instead of just re-releasing some, let's just re-release like all of the really unique ones like the 3250. This is basically the 3250 in 2022. Just looking at both of them, this whole thing, the bottom piece here, obviously with the 3250, you can swivel that around to have that whichever way you want. Whereas this is just sort of, well, you get the touch screen and the speaker there. But honestly, this is how I would imagine this being made to an Android device like this. Also at the bottom, type C and a little hole for a microphone. So let's pop the SIM tray out, which we get options for two nano SIMs or a nano SIM and a micro SD card. I'll put a Telstra SIM and my 16 gig micro SD card straight into there. Also, I just realized that this is a uh, control knob. That's what it appears to be. I don't know if it's supposed to spin, but we'll see. And the power button is right here. So just power it on. Three, two, one, here we go. Do you have battery? Yes, we do. That's a very cool boot logo. How do you also use this phone? Cause I'm kind of like wanting to press here, but it's like, <laughs> you gotta hold it like this. There it is, sugar. We have to set it up. Oh, there's a notification LED right there too. So does this do anything? Oh my God, that is actually to change the volume. It's a bit tight, but it works. Also, it's almost dead. It hasn't picked up a network as of yet. I did put a Telstra SIM in here, which I probably wouldn't expect that to work, but we'll give it a go. I'll connect to my Wi-Fi, 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz as well. Standard Gboard there. We just got 4G as well. It's so weird typing when you've just got this massive hunk down here of just something that can't be used as of yet. And there's no fingerprint or face unlock or anything like that. Very basic. I wonder how big the speaker is in here though. I reckon it's just one huge one that they've just slapped in there. I've got to say though, it is a very unique device. Just a quick size comparison there between an iPhone 6 and the Sugar Phone. The Sugar Phone is a bit bigger, but screen wise, it's definitely a lot smaller, but pretty much a quarter of this phone is taken up with this speaker. Do we really want Google Assistant? And that's it. We've booted up. Having a closer look at the buttons. So this one here is menu options. Double clicking this brings up recents and that is back. But the designs on them is like a little screenshot, a circle and a sort of speech bubble with lines in it. But if you hold, does that do anything? 
No, it doesn't. Basically, the on-screen keys are now physical keys, which I don't mind at all. We've got a little search widget on the top there, Gmail, Photos, Play Store, phone. The speaker's loud. Messages, Chrome, camera, Android. Stop scaring me. I don't want a heart attack just yet. Android keyboard, calculator, calendar, camera, Chrome. Shh, be quiet. There are people sleeping. Calculator, calendar, camera, Chrome, clock, contacts, drive, duo, file manager, Gmail, Google Maps, messaging, mobile broadcast, phone, photos, play movies, play music, play store, settings, sim toolkit, and YouTube. Basically stock Android. Let's have a look at the wallpapers real quickly. Oh, you get one. Is there any live wallpapers perhaps? Nope, no live wallpapers. Widget wise, stock stuff there. Home settings, can't do much there. So I'll just show you the display real quickly. It is a fairly low resolution display. 480 by 354 or whatever it said is about correct, I would say, for this IPS LCD. But for a cheapy $85 phone, it's not bad for the size of the display anyways. Swiping down, we're at 4%, we're getting there. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, do not disturb, torch. Let's try the torch. Oh, did... Is that even working? My LED flash is broken. Come on, buddy. Oh, it's faulty. Maybe when I use the camera, it might come on, possibly. We'll see, I guess. Mobile data, airplane mode, cast, no NFC, nothing like that. Also, I thought of something completely random. With the speaker down at the bottom, I thought, oh, what if they maybe intended for you to use it like this? With the speaker at the top there. That's not the case because I've tried going into settings and it doesn't flip around to being this way. I can have it sideways, no problems, and then use it like this or just leave it the intended way. Another thing I wondered, to take a screenshot, you press volume down and the power button, so it would look a little something like this. Nope. No, you can't take a screenshot with a shortcut because of the volume knob. This is also handy for use in the camera, which I'll show very soon. Let's go straight into settings then. Also, I forgot to mention weight-wise, this is probably about the same weight as the iPhone 6 as well. Yeah, about the same. It is starting to heat up though, right here. So network and internet, five gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. Mobile network, we'll just quickly see. Enhanced 4G LTE mode, should be 4G then. Hang on, let's see. There it is, Telstra 4G. I mean, if it supports Telstra, then I'd say the band list would be somewhat decent. All right, so I managed to find a band list online, so I'll display the band list on screen for you all. And while there's not too many bands here, the three major telcos in Australia work with these bands, so there's no issues there. And with dual SIM support, it isn't dual 4G, it's one SIM at 4G and the other at 3G. I'll leave a link in the description below so you can take a look at this on AliExpress. It's not an affiliate link or anything, so don't worry there. If you want to take a look at this thing or Google it and see if you can find it any cheaper, let me give this thing a call then. Let's see what the default ringtone is and how loud it's going to be. Here we go. Or not that loud. And testing the earpiece quality of the Sugar A100, this is what it sounds like, and from my quick test, it didn't sound too bad at all. It is nice and loud, and the best part is if you want to use a loudspeaker, I can tell you that you'll definitely be able to hear the person on the other end of the line. And the microphone quality on the Sugar A100 sounds a little something like this. I can hear a little bit of interference while doing this test, but it's nothing major. And any interference you do hear is because I'm recording with my Blue Yeti microphone. But otherwise, I've already done the camera test and the microphone sounds pretty clear for a device at this price range. So that was the core quality test of the Sugar A100. Doesn't sound that bad. The speaker, though, I have a feeling the ringtone's not set to the absolute highest volume. But I really can't wait to test BFG Division on this thing to see how loud that actually is. Because those notifications kind of made me jump a little bit. Let's go back into settings. Connected devices. Not much to do there. Apps and permissions. Let's go through the app list real quickly. So the Android Easter egg. I'll just scroll through here real quickly to see if I can see anything that may stick out. MediaTek's there, so we've likely got a MediaTek processor in this, but I don't know anything past that though. Google Play services, all good there. Launcher 3, which I think, yeah, that's MediaTek. Yeah, there's definitely MediaTek stuff here. But I don't think there's anything dodgy though. I think it's all looking pretty good. Sugar Show version. We'll try secret codes and see if that comes up with anything. Got a Chinese app there that may be engineer mode possibly. Not too sure at this stage. Battery. We've got two hours and 16 minutes until fully charged. Oh boy. All right. Well, um, I'll show battery percentage. So I'll guess I'll have to let this charge and let you all know how the battery did go on standby and just by using it. Just figured I'd splice this in, but I've done a battery test with this. Just leaving it over standby for 12 hours. It went from 100% down to about 52%. And then leaving over 24 hours, it was completely dead. And then charging it back up did take about two hours so this doesn't have any fast charging capabilities or anything like that pretty much what it says on the display about 12 hours 37 minutes remaining 
that's pretty much what you're going to get out of this. I did see somewhere that the battery capacity is advertised at 2,500 milliamp hours, but I'm still unsure of that. I will get to find out once I tear this down. Display, brightness levels at 38%. I might bump it up actually. There we go. That's a little better. Wallpaper, we've already checked them. Advanced, auto rotate, display size, font style, sound. Oh no, the ring volume was absolutely high. Okay. Sound enhancements, best loudness. It's definitely MediaTek. Well, we should turn that on actually just to see. Storage, we've got 16 gigabytes of internal storage with five gig used and my SD card there, which is 16 gigabytes. And I won't be able to dump the system files off this, unfortunately, because it's running Android 8.1 or just Android 8. And as far as I know, you can't dump all the system files. If someone can point me in the right direction of dumping the system files, I'll definitely do it. Dura speeds on, security and location, all basic for the screen lock there. Accessibility options, don't have too much in here, to be honest. Is there any talkback? No, talkback's not here. System, gestures, jump to camera, date and time, backup. Yep, so the system is 8.1.0. So we'll just see if there's a security patch. 5th of October, 2018 is the last version that was on here. So yeah, it's quite out of date, no updates. I mean, what, we're up to Android 13 now. I don't think there's gonna be any updates for this. Finally, about phone though. Here are the IMEIs once again. Feel free to pause and check to see where these are from, if they're pinched from anything or if they actually correspond to this device. We do have a unique serial number. Well done, sugar, well done. Running 8.1.0, do this. We should get our little friend. Where is he? All right, how laggy is he? Oh, no, he's, he's kind of fine. Oh, a little bit laggy. Basement version there, build number, I'll enable developer options, why not? And the hardware version, ET630MB version 0.2, and custom built version, that's about it within settings. Well, develop options, I'll um, come down to window animations and make them 0.5 to just make everything feel 3% snappier. I like doing this on every Android device, because look, nice and fast now, see? All right, now I'll go ahead and start testing the applications. And I usually start at the first one. I'm actually gonna start with music first. All right, so here we go, BFG Division. Make sure that this is bumped all the way up and best loudness is also off. However, I will enable it after this quick test. How's it gonna sound? Pretty loud. That honestly didn't sound too bad at all. It's quite loud, has a bit of punch to it, maybe a little bit distorted at full volume. If you bumped it down ever so slightly, then you'd have pretty much no issues. But let me put best loudness on and see if that makes a difference. Sounds about the same. Honestly, with best loudness on it, it kind of sounded exactly the same, but that speaker, performance-wise, I think that's pretty good. It's advertised as a music phone and a children's phone at the same time. That speaker's pretty good. I can't wait to actually tear this down to have a better look at the hardware that's in here. Definitely beats any welcome device any day of the week. I mean, as a music phone, you'd expect a headphone jack on here, but for the price, it's completely fine. Let's move on to the camera then. All right, so fairly basic. Does have manual focus. So it should have autofocus as well. HDR is there too. Let me just try the flash again. Let me see if this works. Oh, hello. The flash did work. Maybe torch is broken? Let me try that again. Oh, wait, what? That's actually really bright. That's good. I like that. But then why did it not work initially? I have no idea. Let's not question it. We can switch to the front camera. It's looking like that. No autofocus or anything. It's just fixed. Can we actually do any settings? So we have the picture size as five megapixels for the front camera. All the options there, which I'll just leave at medium. Video for the front camera is 640 by 480 or 720p. We'll do 720p. Oh, we have panorama for the rear camera as well. The video quality on the rear camera is 1280 by 720 or 1920 by 1080. EIS will put on as well. And the rear camera is 13 megapixels. Remember what I was saying earlier about this in the camera? Okay, while it doesn't really work that fast, you can just take multiple pictures if you just do that. Or alternatively, you can hold it like this and just press the camera shutter key. But if you wanted to, that option is there. 
well, let me go take some photos and videos with the Sugar A100, and we'll come back and we'll start doing some gaming with this and see how YouTube performs on this. So we'll get to try the speaker again, but also I need to charge this and do a battery test. So we'll be back in a bit. Here's the rear camera quality video wise for the Sugar A100. If I just go for a close up to the frogs, let's see if it auto focuses. Uh, no, I'll have to manual focus. There we go, manual focus works. It doesn't look too bad. There's definitely some EIS going on. It looks fairly smooth and clear from what I can see on this 3.5 inch display. There's the flowers there, we'll get a nice look at them. They're blowing away, don't blow away. Just took my thumbnail there, no worries. The three Muppets as per usual. Looking fairly good, honestly. Maggie the magpie there, nice and close to the eyeball. There you go. Brick wall, and down to Stuart and Mick, just chilling. Lemon just there, looking very nice. It was green, now it's nice and vibrant. And the faraway aircon looks a little something like this with a four times digital zoom. Or can you see Breeze there? I don't think you can. Oh, the sun's just come out. All right, let's move on to night mode and then the front camera. All right, testing night mode with the Sugar A100. And as you can see, I can still focus and everything looks good. And Ripley is upset that I'm outside, so she's clawing at the window. Um, but yeah, otherwise this is actually looking pretty good. If I stand up as well, you can still see the frogs. So that's not too bad. The flash is definitely bright, so no problems with that. Testing the front camera quality of the Sugar A100. This is what video looks like, and honestly, from what I can see, it doesn't look too bad. Uh, do we have any focusing? No, we don't. Uh, it's just as it is, but no jelly movement, honestly. It looks fairly good for what it is. I look dead as usual, which is no surprise there. Um, I'm holding it sideways, which I think is a little bit better because it's just easy to hold because you've got that massive area down there to just grip. So yeah, I think that's not too bad, honestly. Can I zoom in? Oh dear, four times digital zoom. All right, you've just seen the photos and videos that I took with the Sugar A100. And I've got to say, they're not bad at all. We have seen a lot worse from welcome devices that are $150 plus. This is just a very oddball phone being sold on AliExpress for 85 bucks or 73 without the box. It takes some fairly good photos. Yeah, it's a little bit blurry and it's not the sharpest. HDR does brighten things up ever so slightly, which is what it's meant to do. Autofocus for the most part is nice and fast. Manual focus also works pretty good. And sure enough, the resolution of the photo was 13 megapixels, so they've chucked a 13 megapixel camera in this. 1080p video on the back camera, which didn't look too bad. Once again, for the price, I'll give it a pass. The front camera, very basic, 720p video. Not a lot you can do there, it is what it is. But honestly, no major complaints for the camera. I'm really glad we found this phone, because while it does have some shortcomings that I'll talk about in the conclusion, it's got a lot of things that I do like about this. But anyways, let's move on. And I have already spliced in this information when I was looking through settings, but I have done a battery test, and after 12 hours, it went from 100% down to 52% and you would get about 12 hours of battery life 
on average, depending on what you do with this, of course. I'm more just testing this myself off camera. The general performance isn't too bad. Everything is quite responsive for what it is. I have installed a bunch of applications to test on this, including Activity Launcher, Arc Survival Evolved, which hopefully should work on this, unlike the OnePlus 10T, it just refused to work. Geekbench as well, just to see what numbers we get. San Andreas, Device Info Hardware, and Secret Codes, just to see if there's anything kicking around. I know I started with Music First, which might have thrown a lot of people off, but I'll just make my way through the applications real quickly. Android Keyboard, don't need to do much. Arc will come back to. Calculator looks like a calculator. It's rad, as always. Calendar looks like a calendar. Camera, I've already been through. So let's open Google Chrome and do the browser test, which it looks a little something like this. And if I type in Sugar A100, see if anything comes up. So we do have some specifications there, some videos of people that have already reviewed it. There was a case that was supposed to come with this, maybe in a better package or something. You were supposed to get a cute little case, but that would have been nice to have. Browsing wise, I don't think you'll be able to do too much with this for a kid to just browse whatever, you know, if you're a parent, you want to put something on for your kids, just go, here you go, watch this. Well, this will be fine for that, but serious browsing, I think you may struggle. Social media might be all right though. I don't think the intended market for this device is going to be using this for really intensive stuff. Clock, looks like the usual clock. Contacts, we don't need to go into. Device info hardware, we'll come back to. Drive Duo File Manager is the stock file manager on Android. Geekbench, we'll come back to. Gmail, Google, San Andreas, we'll definitely come back to. Maps, I also done a quick GPS test and I didn't have any issues with that. I just test GPS just in case and this was using Wi-Fi as well so maybe using cellular by itself might be a bit slow but otherwise with my quick test it was perfectly fine. Messaging we don't need to go into. Mobile broadcast I've forgotten what this does. Oh it's the emergency alerts. Well there's no emergency alerts so no need to panic. We've got play music which I've already done the speaker test. Play store secret codes we'll come back to. Settings sim toolkit and YouTube. So let's do the YouTube test now. Discover satisfaction a good ad. So the quality is at 144p at the moment. So let's see what we can do. We can do 1080p 60fps on a 480x320 display. But at least I'll now get to see the performance of video and get a better look at the display. And the speaker should kick in right about now. I can't really tell. Got a low res display. Oh, yep. Yeah, it's laggy. It's laggy. But it looks fairly clear. I mean, you can see the pixels there. It's a bit low res, as I said. Oh, no, actually, it kicked in. If you put it down to 720p, I reckon it'll be fine. Plus, if you give this to a kid just to watch YouTube on, it'll be on whatever resolution that's default anyway, so that's not going to be any problems. I've just set it on 720p 60fps just to see what it looks like now. That's better. That's way better. For the resolution, that's perfect. And looking at the display close up, I can see that it is quite blurry, but the colors are nice and sharp, so it's not all bad there. And with just playing YouTube, the phone is starting to heat up right along here. I'm gonna open up Geekbench. We've got a MediaTek MT6739WW, which I think I've reviewed a phone with that processor in it already, but I'll run this benchmark, which may take a while, but for you, it'll be instantaneous. Let's see what numbers we get for a device that costs under $100. Just casually playing Clone Hero while I'm waiting for Geekbench again. We got 104 for the single core and 313 for the multi-core score, which I'll display some other scores from previous phones here. It definitely beats the x Mate 40, which is good. Single core score is close to a Helio P22, but the multi-core score doesn't even get anywhere close to that. These are just numbers at the end of the day. And as I've already previously mentioned several times for the intended audience for this device, pretty sure they're not gonna be pushing it to its absolute limits. But in our case, Let's just agree with these numbers and start trying gaming on this. I'm going to start the gaming test with San Andreas. Very weird to do the test with this massive piece here and also trying not to block the sound at the same time. With everything set to maximum, let's give this a go. Also should bump the volume down ever so slightly. I don't expect this to run too well, but we'll see. All right, here we go. Get on the bike and off we go. We'll use buttons because I'm used to buttons. All right. Yeah, okay. It's a bit laggy, which was to be expected, but this is all on maximum though. Let me just fly off this ramp as I usually do. Well, it's not really a ramp, it's more a shortcut. Made it. If I put the visual effects to medium, the resolution to 50%, the draw distance to 50%, the car reflections I'll leave to detailed, and shadows I'll leave to classic. Now let's see the performance. 
There we go. That looks a lot better, actually. That's not too bad at all. Yeah, this is more than playable then. Just bump the settings down and off you go. It is a little awkward, as I said, because of this whole area here, but no, actually, I'm quite happy with that. Does haptic feedback work? No. I don't know if it was the haptic feedback or the speaker being so loud, but it felt like it vibrated then. Not too bad, providing you bump the settings down. The next one, though, I'm not expecting too much from, and that's Ark. I don't even know if this will launch. We'll try. Oh. Oh, okay. Bad download or not enough storage. All right, let me try and fix this. I'll try reinstalling it just to see if that makes a difference. I did search up Genshin Impact, but that didn't appear. I could install Raid Shadow Legends. It'd be great to play that game again where you just tap the screen. The exciting gameplay of Raid Shadow Legends is tap, tap. It's good. Also forgot to mention while playing San Andreas, it did get considerably hot once again here, and it's getting quite warm just downloading this. So when we take it apart, we'll get to see if there's any thermal implemented there. Okay, Ark has reinstalled, and I have freed up some storage space, so let's see if it works. There we go. Oh, oh it crashed. No, I'm not expecting for this to be 60 FPS. I'm just amazed to see if this will actually work. All right. I just clicked exit. No, it crashed. So let's just see if this will actually work. Also, phone's getting hot. <laughs> it's warming up. Poor sugar, you're doing your best. Oh, nah. I tried, but unfortunately, nah, it's just gonna keep crashing. It's on the bare minimum to actually run Ark. I'm amazed that it actually even launched at all, so I gave it a shot, and that's the result, unfortunately. But I got a good idea with San Andreas that gaming-wise, you're not gonna get too far with that, but basic games off the Play Store, any random puzzle games or anything like that, if you just wanna throw them on here, they'll be absolutely fine, but 3D performance is gonna struggle. But with the gaming test done, I think we should double-check the specifications to know exactly what we're dealing with inside of the Sugar A100. MT6739 is what showed in Geekbench, so that's all correct. Two gigabytes of LPDDR3 RAM, 16 gigabytes of flash storage, and it actually says the flash module there as well. Running Oreo, the display confirmed to be 480 by 320, and I'll do the multi-touch test just to see. What would it be? Oh, five point multi-touch. 2 gig LPDDR3 RAM and 16 gigabytes of storage, 13 megapixel back camera, and 5 megapixel for the front camera, so all looking correct here. Battery says 1000 milliamp hours for the power profile, which it usually always says. Thermal is around 30 degrees roughly, but I reckon I got a lot hotter than that in certain scenarios. Sensors, we've got an accelerometer, light sensor, proximity, and a magnetometer, magnetometer, magnetometer. My accent butcher stuff, I'm sorry. And just opening up the other application real quickly to check everything. I'll make sure that these applications are linked down in the description below if you want to test them on your own device, feel free. But everything is all correct here. System on chip is correct. Memory is correct. RAM is correct. Two gigabytes there. 3.6 inches, it's close enough. 320 by 480. Battery, yes. And the capacity is 98 milliamp hours. Not correct. 28 degrees for the temperatures and the cameras, 13 megapixel and 5 megapixel. So looking all good. Next up, we should test the secret codes, which I won't be able to launch them directly from here, but I can always copy them and put them in the phone dialer. But we've got factory tests there. It might be easier to use Quick Shortcut Maker instead of secret codes from now on. It's just easier to open this up, look through here, and then open it straight up from here. So let me just check EM camera. Oh, okay, well that stopped working. Factory test, so that is MediaTek factory test. Sugar show version, see what this is. That's sugar show version. Can't do much here. And there was that Chinese application here. What does this do? Main activity. Oh, it's just factory testing. Okay. Apart from that though, that's pretty much everything within here. I don't see anything dodgy. I think it's all looking fairly stock for the most part with some MediaTek stuff thrown in there. But otherwise, that's it within Quick Shortcut Maker. And with that, folks, that is everything that I wanted to test on the Sugar A100. Done a gaming test, browser test, YouTube test, tested the speaker, the display performance, Geekbench. We've done a lot of things. But what I can say, if you're giving this to your kids as their first phone instead of something fancy like an iPhone for the price, it's perfect just for bits of social media 
media, random YouTube stuff, random stuff on the Google Play Store. Perfect for that, considering it has 4G, the decent speaker. While it does have Android 8.1, I'm pretty sure that Android 10 could have been possibly put on this, but 8.1 is fine. Two gig of RAM definitely helps. 16 gigs of storage is plenty, and you've got the micro SD card support. USB Type-C charging would have been nice for a headphone jack. Only sort of downsides that I see with this is the display and the resolution. They're a bit lacking. The battery life is definitely lacking. No headphone jack, but I guess you can't do much. Outdated version of Android, of course. Everything else sort of is a winner for me. I like the design, even with all of that going on. Don't judge me. I reckon that's kind of a nice design. Instead of it just being plain pink, you know, you've got all that going on. You've got physical buttons, aluminium volume control knob. And if I just done a quick bend test, That's solid. I mean, I'm no bodybuilder or anything, but that ain't going anywhere. Basically, all in all, for the price, I really can't complain with this. Especially if you bought this without the box and just the phone itself for 73 bucks. Everyone's got a USB Type-C cable laying around. And with no fancy features and basically keeping everything at an absolute minimum, for a basic device like this, I reckon it's pretty good. Feel free to let me know in the comments if this is something you would be interested in buying. As a person who likes to collect various mobile devices, this is definitely a cool one for the collection. And as I said, I definitely see this as a bit of a successor to the Nokia 3250, just by the design and partial functionality, I suppose. But that's everything that I need to show on the Sugar A100. Let's take it apart and have a look at inside of it. I'll power it off, and I know how to open this up. It should be fairly easy, so let's go ahead and do that. This is how you get into it, just like that. I wasn't quite expecting that. <laughs> The battery's kind of just stuck there. Yeah, that's not adhered very well at all. The whole entire thing looks like it's just all plastic. So let's keep going. Okay, so that's the bottom there. So there's adhesive just kind of stuck everywhere in there. So I'll take out the screws that are holding this thing together. We're inching closer to having a look at the speaker as well. So one thing I would say with the build quality, just be careful that the back doesn't sort of fall off. <laughs> You should be fine for the most part, but if you do give this to your kid as a first device, they may sort of start playing around and may accidentally knock the back cover off. It could happen. The battery, unfortunately, has no information on it. Maybe the 2500 that I did see online is correct, and I know that, you know, the battery just sort of sticking out there is not really helpful, but I don't have a choice. So popping this piece off, I do have access to the battery now, so I can just disconnect that and feed that through. Now the frame can just pull away like so, and it's just all plastic there, and thus revealing the motherboard. Look at this. That is the speaker within this. No, I shouldn't be using a metal ruler to measure this thing, but it would appear to be a 30 millimeter driver. And that's just communicating with two little contacts. It just fires sound out there like so. Just shining my phone through there. That is where the speaker channel is located. The subboard just down at the bottom here has some contacts on it. The USB type C charging port with no rubber ring around it because there's no water resistance rating or anything like that. There is a date on here which says 2019 on that subboard. There's just also the contacts for the microphone that's down the bottom there. Let me take out the motherboard so we can get a better look at what's going on. There are several flex ribbons that connecting the motherboard all up. And I've also just noticed an unused connector just there. This is definitely a custom motherboard specifically for this phone. So I wonder what that could have been used for. With everything disconnected, I can just pull the motherboard out from there. And it appears we have a metal frame that's integrated into the plastic frame. So that's not too bad at all. No thermal or anything. That's because this side of the motherboard doesn't have any chips on it. So that's just leaning against there. The chips are here. So that's why I could feel the heat from this phone because the chips are right there. It was only just the battery and the plastic on top of it for thermal. So that's why it was getting a little bit toasty. LCD ribbon pops through the little earpiece. The secondary microphone just laid down like the bottom one is. The volume control is just this little flex cable here. And the power button is this one here. It does say FPC written on the connector. And I was gonna say that could mean fingerprint, but I don't think that's a fingerprint sensor there. Taking a closer look at the motherboard. So I've got the dual SIM tray here, the shielding, which I honestly will just leave on. This is definitely not lying to us about the RAM or storage or processor. I was gonna say, I'll just leave the shielding on, but I can actually take it off because it's just clipped on. So I'll show you that in a second. The rear camera is just this one here. There is a code just there, if you can see that, but that looks to be a 13 megapixel camera. I wouldn't doubt that. The front camera is a 
Sunwin H917, and that's just this one here, which was just fairly basic. The buttons are integrated onto the motherboard, which, yeah, this is a complete custom motherboard for this phone. It's not just reused from something. This is completely 100% custom, which is very unusual, I will say. The LED flash is also just above the camera there, and that was fairly bright for what it was. Lifting up the first piece of shielding reveals we actually do have some thermal pads within there. And that is over the MediaTek processor, as well as I would say the storage and RAM. Judging by the chips around there, that is the power IC most likely. So I'll stick that back on. And there's not too much under this one. I would say the chips in there would likely just be for Bluetooth and cellular. Weird to see that it's got a custom motherboard in here. I was not expecting that. I thought it may have just been mishmash parts here and there, but prove me wrong. And while there's only a minimal amount of thermal stuff implemented into this, it doesn't quite help too much when the phone does get considerably warm with intensive stuff. It tries its best and it's good to see a metal frame integrated into the plastic frame. I wasn't expecting that either. I thought it was just entirely all plastic, but that's why it was kind of structurally sound when I tried to bend it. And as I said, I'm no strong man, so couldn't exactly snap it in half, but from the test I quickly done, seemed solid. And it was also good to have a look at that speaker. Not bad at all. So now I'll put this back together and we'll see if it still works and call this a video, I think. All right, well, it's kind of half assembled, so I'll just see if it still works. While it is booting, I'll show all the main specifications to the size, so feel free to pause here to double check all of this, but I'm fairly sure it's right for the most part. Not a bad device for the price, I will say that. I think I've already said that several times, but it all still works. I'm really happy that I finally got to have a look at this device because it's been on my radar for so long. And as I said, a lot of you folks in chat were being really generous and said, why don't you buy it so you can finally show it on your channel? And here it is. So I hope I've done this video justice. Hopefully if you decide to purchase this, I've made the review worthwhile. Or if this is something that doesn't really phase you, that's completely fine. I will properly reassemble this and then we'll finish this off. There we go. I may have to put new adhesive on that to uh, stick that back down. But it's back together for the most part, and everything is still all working, so that's good to see. But that, my friends, is the Sugar A100 phone review that probably went too long, but I just wanted to go in depth as I usually do and show you what this device can do. And I've already given you my conclusion on it. Fox is ab, you are well. Hello, R-E-D-G-R-U. It's pretty confusing, but sure thing. And as always, if you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. And I hope you enjoyed having a look at the Sugar A100 phone with me. If you need to use the timestamps that were included in the description and pinned comment, that's absolutely fine. That's why they're there. If you wanted to just see gaming performance or the teardown or the camera test, feel free to jump to those sections if you need to. They should be actually integrated within the YouTube video and yeah, come up as chapters. So you should be all good in that regards. But once again, a massive thank you to the folks who donated on my live stream for putting money towards this to finally have a look at this on the channel. So I hope you all enjoyed that as well. And stay tuned because I do have more AliExpress items on their way, just waiting for them to arrive. When they turn up, I'll start working on them and you should see them very soon. But otherwise, everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. And I hope you thoroughly enjoyed looking at such an oddball device with me. I definitely had a blast looking at this. For the price, I'm just glad that it offered everything it said in the listing and the back's starting to come off. All right, I need to adhere that back on. As always, folks, please take care, stay safe and be good people. And I'll see you all in the next video, which should be me looking at cheapo stuff, which nothing changes there. Stay tuned for the next one. Take care and I'll see you next time time. If you like this content, feel free to leave a like or a dislike if you didn't. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you all in the next video.